Hello there. It's been a miserable old morning. It's been raining and raining and raining. Still drizzle now. I've been out fishing. I didn't do any good through whiting. It's a bit early in the season for whiting, so perhaps the end of the month. So I've come in my workshop and just have a little play with a few bits and bobs. So this little waffle is about nothing in particular at all. Uh, but um, I thought I'd just add another one. Somebody asked me about this eagle-eyed person asked me about this rubber mat on my bench. Well, you can see the size of it. It's about three foot by two something. How thick was it, someone said. And I, I think I said ten mil, but it's not. It's about five, five or six. I don't know where I got it from. It definitely is rubber. But it saves a lot of wear and tear on my, uh, on my bench. And... Uh, it's very, very handy because things don't slip too easy and uh, it resists heat quite well, so I can do some soldering. And, and it's very handy for using uh, sharp knives, craft knives for cutting. So say it saves the, the bench quite a lot. But it added a bonus is it's, because it is actually rubber, um, it's an insulator, which, you know, judging by one or two of the things I do, is a jolly good job it is. <laughs> I was brought up, oh, early radio days of uh, vicious HT, AC, DC mains. In fact, my, the first mains of our house was DC. And that takes no prisoners, I can tell you. <laughs> and uh, the very early days of TV, oh, lethal, lethal voltages. Get that wrong and it's Hello St. Peter, you know, so... Uh, so although I do a lot of dodgy things by today's standards, and I don't advocate you do this, but I often just twiddle wires together. I don't insulate them and plug them in. I, I make sure I've got one hand in my pocket all the time. And we know accidents can happen, but uh, I'm extremely wary on that score. Electricity burns as well as shocks, and uh, the old school amongst you, We'll know about the hand in the pocket business. Primarily it was so you didn't get electric in one hand and electric in the other hand and you had voltage across your chest and your heart. I mean there's no way you could let go. Your muscles would cramp up and uh, you're a goner. So uh, as I say it takes no prisoners. So I've been brought up with a little bit of, a little bit of common sense. And I always use well insulated screwdrivers and uh, very careful. A case in point, the reason I brought this up, or just start to waffle on about it, is I made this the other day. I was playing around with a little colour wheel and um, let's plug it in. That's charging, put that in there, that's alright. And uh, it's uh, a little disc of celluloid and um, or cellophane. And it slowly turns as a microwave oven turntable motor there and a little 12 volt bulb. Let's shine it that way, that's better. Um, something white in front, there you go, maybe. Um, and a small transformer just to drop the voltage to the bulb. And it goes around about 5 RPM per minute, about the same as a well, as I say, it's a microwave oven motor. And I've got loads and loads of these because I'm forever pulling them. And that's, that off. I've got loads and loads of these boxes. Um, oh, I just grabbed one. And I made up this quick little unit. Yes, I know you can buy bulbs that change colour and they're cheap now, but when I made this, it wasn't. And as I say, I want this for a, a kiddie's cartoon effect I'm working on. Anyway, I digress. So I quickly made this up, bits and pieces of wood, just glued, and grabbed one of these motors, <laughs> and switched it on. It worked like a good one for about ooh, five, six seconds. Then it went shush, poof, and a big puff of white smoke came out, and it was good night from that. <laughs> so, oh, what's gone wrong here? And uh, I didn't check. I didn't check. 
I mean, as I say, I've got loads and loads of them. But out of the box, <laughs> I pulled out a 12 volt AC one, and it didn't like 240, 250 going in it. So, uh, <laughs> don't assume anything, always check. But as I say, I was brought up with, in different times, where you had mains droppers, big ceramic mains droppers. In fact, some of the early radios, the mains was dropped in the lead itself. It had a resistance in the lead, and unbeknown to a lot of people, they'd reduce the length of the lead and blow the radios up. <laughs> All good fun, isn't it? All good fun. Anyway, just a point about the rubber mat. I've also got a rubber mat on the floor, by the way. Ah, uh, what else we got to chat about? Well, I'm still on the electrics. Here I've got... Unless I want to show it with this screwdriver best. Here's a... Three, hello, what have I dropped? Oh, the trigger. Put that down there. There we go. Oh, that should... Go in there. That's it. That's better. It's a shoulder gun. Okay, so I'm getting close. There's nothing more than a transformer and a, a copper winding here. Just one heavy turn comes out and it's basically a short circuit, really. Anyway, it's playing up and um, it didn't get hot properly. And I mean, normally you push the trigger one second, two seconds, and that's hot and you just do a quick solder job. And that's why I found it handy. Anyway, it played up and played up. And it doesn't take much resistance to... to um, cause problems here and I thought it was in this where these clamp the my little homemade element there but it wasn't if I get in really close that'll do if you look very closely will it show it up just about but the plastic just here if it shows it up has bubbled just there and you can see it there in other words this leg has got hotter than that leg and it transpires, there's a, a ohm or two between that piece of copper and that piece of brass. So how am I going to get over that? I don't quite know. We used to make loads of these years ago as quick solder and I was just using filament transformers and then cutting off the secondary and a couple of heavy, heavy winds of wire and out and back. They are very quick in the field. Anyway, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that. I'll think of something. Um, went shopping yesterday. Oh, here, I'll show you this. Padlock. Went to Oldies. And uh, I'm always on about things made in China being rubbish. Well, this is made in China, although it's got something, it says something about German there. And it's padlocked, brass padlock, rectangular padlock, three pounds fifty. I thought well, that looks good. That looks very good for three fifty. And a lot of these things look good until you come to use them, and they're absolute, yeah, rubbish. <laughs> but this is rather good. I mean, you get what you pay for always, but um, value for money, it's rather good, and I can I can endorse this. Um, well, you can see the principle, it's a, a bar which is captive, um, and it's hardened. I mean, to what level it's hardened to, I've, I've no idea. But, um, I mean, it would take quite a bit of cutting to cut through there with a hacksaw. But what I particularly liked is the shaft turns. Okay, so if someone's going to cut through this with a hacksaw blade, It'll tend to rotate, and it means they'll have to hold this with a pair of pliers or mole grips, or cut through this, or cut through that. Yeah, we know they can use a, a grinding, cutting disc, but my knowledge of, um, or my experience of, of thieves, generally they're opportunists. They're not... Uh, well, quite frankly, they're not the sharpest knife in the drawer, are they? And uh, if they were, they'd be of a different calibre person and they could earn a living without having to rob you and I. But anyway, we'll leave that for now. But I thought that was good value for money. And now I've got no, no uh, 
Shares in Aldi. <laughs> well, I thought, 350, I thought, that's really nice. And, and the key doesn't come out until it's in that position. Anyway, I thought I'd just show you that. Did I say this waffle was about nothing in particular? 